All right, here we are again, ladies and gentlemen, Hillary and I. Uh, happy Easter. Yes, happy Easter, and it's supposed to be spring here, but it's uh, Mother Nature is not cooperating. It, I think it wants to keep winter around forever at this point. Yes, I have been uh, at home in, well, my parents' home in Omaha for the last few days, and I flew back and was not expecting to come back to snow, but that's what I came back to. And then it also hailed this afternoon, so that was another little treat. Um, Didn't it take your pilot two tries to land in this weather? <laughs> it did, because the wind and the snow were so bad, so... Just a little Easter surprise for me. Well, speaking of uh, newsworthy events, we got to get this right up front. If you look on the bottom, Hillary has been nominated for the Best of Whitefish Real Estate Agent. Last year, I came in second, so it is critical that <laughs> Hillary wins this year. So for all of you guys watching, I put the link into our show notes below. I think you can access it easy enough. Um, if not, just Google Best of Whitefish 2022 and it'll come up. And uh, here's what it, here's the site. Uh, it's through the local newspaper here in town. And it would be very cool if Hillary won. Uh, there'd be a banner that we can hang out in front of our office. And uh, so, yeah, we'd appreciate it if you guys would all vote for her. And you can vote every day from now until May 1st. And uh, so, yeah, that would be awesome. And right now, Hillary will give a, a campaign speech for us all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't, but I would appreciate it if you would vote. I'm very shocked that I even made it to the top 10. Will is kind of uh, like the best hype man ever. He's really gotten me pumped up for it. And so, uh, yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> Well, we'll see how. And better. now it would just be really fun if I won because he came in second place. And so. Yeah, then she could hold that over me until the end of time. So that, yeah, that would be awesome. It would be sort of enjoyable for me. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, uh, with that being said, um, we can move on to what's actually happening here in Montana. We are, yeah. there is good news out there for you people that are thinking about buying this year. It finally looks like things are slowing down uh, as far as the number of offers, as far as the number of listings available. And I was looking through the paper earlier uh, this morning, and there's all kinds of articles um, in the national news about the economy and things slowing down. And if uh, this one caught my eye because Boise and all of Idaho, this has Boise and Coeur d'Alene on here, but they've been crazy. They've been crazier than we have as far as uh, their market and what's going on there. Um, and so they're, they're actually slowing down, which, which is going to be a sign for us too, because we're kind of the same product as far as, you know, being in the mountains and away from everything. Boise's a little different. They're, uh, more of a tech town, but I guess they'd be considered, or they'd be comparable to Bozeman if we're if we're comparing cities from here in Idaho and Montana. Um, and then this article was just talking about this agent, I think, uh, in Portland, that you know over there they were crazy as well. But he put a house on the market on a Friday and. It was still there on Monday, which, you know, what what we've seen around here, uh, that just was not happening here and apparently in Portland as well. And let's see, the last article was this one out of the Wall Street Journal. And their point is one of the things slowing this down is uh, the mortgage rates are going up. And so it's kind of taken people you know, the prices of houses have already gone up so, so much. And now with the mortgage rates going up, it's kind of taken people out of the, out of the running. They can't afford it. Um, cause the, it's kind of interesting if you ever go, you go to a mortgage calculator and, and 
they're all over the internet. If you just Google mortgage calculator, um, you can just type in the interest rate, you know, on a 30 year loan. And, and it's amazing how much your payment goes up with each point of a mortgage. And that's what's uh, kind of slowing things down right now is it's just, you know, taking people out of the market. So uh, do you have anything to add, Hillary? I don't. I would, I mean, it's, I would just agree. I mean, it's, we're watching it happen. It does definitely feel like things are slowing down and we're also getting a lot more listings. So it's good. Yeah. So for you guys that are looking to buy, um, that is good news for those of you that have waited to sell. Um, <laughs> you may want to, you may want to get on it uh, before it gets, gets too bad. Um, Cause I, they say the rates are going to continue to rise and obviously mm -hmm. nobody knows where they're going to stop, but it will definitely slow things down. So if you were looking to cash in, um, you may want to get on it. Um, and then just to add on, if you guys want to keep, I know we've signed up several of you um, and we do send out those MLS links so you can kind of check at your own pace and keep an eye on things. But a lot of people get the hot sheet delivered to them every day. And that shows, I mean, you know, over the last 24 hours, what's been listed, what's gone on your contract. Um, so you can, I don't know, really stay on top of it. And it seems like it's been a lot more active recently. So if that's something you're interested in, just send us an email and we can get you set up on a subscription. Yeah, I just put that at the bottom. Um, so email us if you'd like to look at our MLS listings and have access to them. But uh, yeah, it's uh, just been... <laughs> Kind of crazy. We're still getting we're still getting buyers. There's no doubt. But um, like Hillary is just saying, it's definitely slowed down a little bit as far as uh, you know. The there's we're not seeing the multiple offers that we were just a couple months ago, and especially last summer. So it'll be interesting to see when we get into this summer. Um, you know how that all plays out. Yeah. It just doesn't feel quite as high stakes where when we were looking before it was super stressful and it's like we have to get an offer in the second we leave the house if you like it and you're still worried that in that short amount of time five other people are going to make an offer and it's still competitive but it's just not that competitive <laughs> oh. yep so um we actually last week went down we had a a buyer in town and we were down in the Bitterroot Valley, which is where they film Yellowstone. And unfortunately for that guy, um, the, the weather that day was kind of socked in. So you couldn't see the mountains and, you know, it's really fun. Hillary was laughing at me, but I sit there and I'm like, you got to see this view. You got to trust me. It's, it's <laughs> awesome. Cause you know, we're looking out at just clouds. Um, but. It's so sad when people come to visit and they can't see anything. It's either at like this time of year in the winter where it's just foggy and overcast, or if you come late in the summer and then it's just smoky and you just have to say, I promise you, it's pretty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then speaking of Yellowstone, um, no. so there's this, they're, they're starting season five or they're starting to film season five. And there on Facebook, there is a page for to get extras and because um, they need a bunch of extras for the show. So I actually sent in uh, my whatever. You just send a picture in your, you know, height, weight. I don't forget what else. Oh, your coat sizes and shoe size and things like that. So my question to you, Hillary, is have you done that yet? I haven't. Will texted me like three times a day when I was out of town telling me about this Yellowstone stuff. That He's really excited. <laughs> He's told me that they've asked him to replace Kevin Costner. I think that not yet. That's coming. YouTube fame has gotten to his head, and he really thinks that this is going to be his next big break. But 
Uh, no, I am going to do it, though. I just haven't had a chance yet, but I'll do it after this. And if you guys well, are local in Montana, you should do it. And you here's can. what's going to happen. Angie's going to sign up, too. So I guarantee what's going to happen is Hillary and Angie will get asked to do it, and I'll be sitting here doing these videos with you people. So <laughs> I'm just so sad because he's the most exciting. <laughs> I just think it'd be cool. It would be, be a lot cool. of fun. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. We, it's gonna be good. But you know that there is that chance that if one of us gets in there, it could be all over, and you know we'll be headed to Hollywood. Yeah, this might be it, guys. So, um, not a lot of questions this week, Hillary. How come? Where's all the questions? You know, Listen, I think ask that Hillary anything. Doing Easter stuff. Oh, good point. It is Easter Sunday. It's a um, But this is your chance to ask Hillary whatever you want. This is her show. We're dedicating this show to Hillary and whatever you want to know about Hillary, her her childhood, her high school years, her, you know. I'm sure whatever you want to know, fire away. She's got a bunch of fans that we get comments on from on our YouTube videos, so all right, <laughs> let's just start looking at these. Stacker Dude is coming up here in June for a couple of weeks. So All that's right, good. yeah. You should that's... email us and um, meet with us. You can come to the office. Yeah, there's some people coming up next week, I saw. Um, so, yeah, anytime you guys are around um, and touring the area, stop by and we can get you pointed in the right direction. Yes, definitely. What else do we have? Wendy wants to know, what does it mean when a listing says expired? Does that mean the contract didn't go through and the house will come back on the market? Would you like to answer that? So when a listing is expired, that basically just means that whatever, I mean, okay, you don't have to just put me up here. <laughs> I was doing something. Oh, okay, sorry. It just means that the listing agent and whoever is selling that house, you know, came to an agreement. We're going to list it for X amount of time. And if it doesn't sell within that time period, then their contract is expired. So it may come back on the market. It may not. Um, they could list with somebody else. They maybe decide, oh, it didn't sell in this amount of time. I don't want to sell anymore. So I don't know. I mean, it just depends if there's something that you like that says it's expired. Um, you know, you can let us know and we can try to do some research, but it doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to come back on. That is, yep. What you said, that is correct. Um, a lot of times when, the, you know, especially in this market, when things expire, they probably had it listed too high or, yeah. you know, if something didn't sell and because normally listings are at least six months. Um, so if something's been on the market for six months in this market and didn't sell, there's, there's either some big problems or it was priced too high. So. Definitely the price. Yeah. We have Hello, some people. Todd Hello from, from the yeah, and there's someone from the Bitterroot and somebody early on from Livingston, Montana. So nice, Montana. Getting all over. Uh, Dave says, "I know that you said Eureka is a little lighter winter than Kalispell. How's the road between Eureka and Kalispell in the winter?" Um, it can be. It can be bad. There's a lot of bad. animals on the road. Um, in fact, our client that was here uh, last week actually hit a deer on that road. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, so you got to be careful of the animals. But there is kind of a little snow belt in the middle there between Whitefish and Eureka where they do get a lot of snow and it can get pretty slick. Um, but once you get closer, obviously, to Eureka, uh, they don't get nearly the amount of snow and cold that we do which is weird because they're north of us, but um, I don't know. But the road, they keep it up. It's not, you know, it's usually pretty decent. It, I, I've never had 
big problems on that road, but it's not to say it can't happen. Um, but yeah, it's not a, it's not a bad road. I would agree. I've never had major issues and I've driven it when it's like snowing pretty hard and raining and all that. Here you go. This one, this one, I think they're asking you here. What's your favorite beef stew recipe? And then I... he changed it to. Oh, no, I love bears. I don't want to eat them. <laughs> I always, I am so scared of the day that I hit a deer. Um, Cause I will be so, I mean, it will be like a very traumatic experience for me. You know, I've lived here for a long time and I've only hit one and it was, it was weird. Cause I wasn't even going that fast. We were down South uh, kind of below Big Fork there in Ferndale, the suburb of Big Fork. And so I think it was the speed limit was like 35 and I don't think I was even doing that, but this small deer came running out of the ditch, just like out of nowhere and uh there was no avoiding it so well one good. is pretty good i mean you hear people who hit i mean people hit a lot of deer it seems like yeah well so angie and and uh i don't know if i've ever told you this story but she had how i was she had hallie in the car seat this is a long time ago our daughter was in the car seat in the back of our yukon and I was following him. It was when we lived over on the east side of the valley and we were going into Columbia Falls. And you know, right when you go over the bridge there, as you're going towards downtown, there's that little campground over on the right or the RV park. Well, yeah. a deer, I guess a deer had run across in front of them and it kept going. And they both luckily looked to the left to watch the deer run away. And at the same time, another deer was following it and it tried to jump the car and it oh went right God. into the back window and shattered it and all over Hallie in the car seat. And luckily they were both looking the other way or she would have got a face full of glass. Um, so yeah, that was an interesting deer event in our life. Yeah. That's a pretty major one. I'd say. Yeah. So uh, what else do we have? Um, I feel like this is Chris asks. Well, he says, thank you for the videos. Thank you for thinking they're great. Uh, can you tell us about the higher property tax in Missoula County versus the other counties in the Valley? Thanks and happy resurrection day. Happy Easter. I just think, uh, you know, the, the taxes are a little different in the different counties and because Missoula and I don't want to get political, but um it's college town they there's more taxes there they they lean left they, they they like their taxes um and so that would explain why missoula county is a little higher than other ones um but yeah that that would be my two cents on the taxes in missoula and i don't know i'd have to look it up i don't know how much different missoula is from you know, say Flathead County where we're at or or Valley County down in the Bitterroot. I'm not sure where they are or uh, Gallatin where Bozeman is. Um, but it'd be interesting. We should break that down sometime to see the just which counties are the highest. Yeah. Counties. It's a good video idea. Uh, what else? Lola. Have you heard of lenders locking in the interest rate while buyers shop for a home? Yes, I've heard of lenders locking it in, but I know there's a time limit on that. So you just need to check with your lender. Um, it's not like you can lock in today and shop around for three months. Um, I don't know the actual time frame, but there definitely is a time limit. So beware of that. What else you got down there? Hello to the Bitterroot. Here's how are you asking me about stew. <laughs> you never gave your recipe. I don't, not, I don't make a lot of stew, I guess. 
Uh, Stacker Dude will do. They're touring from Hamilton through Superior and Polson, Whitefish, Kalispell, Big Fork. Sounds like a good tour. All right. You'll be coming right through our neighborhood. So look us up. Yes. Um, Lola, have you ever seen a deal fall through right before going to closing? Yes, we have. Um, and there again, I've been doing this long enough to know that, or to have seen all kinds of weird things happen. Um, uh, it's usually a financing thing. Don't ever, I was just talking about this on the video that's coming out on Tuesday. Uh, I've seen people where, you know, when you, when you, with your lender, you lock in your interest rate, they check your credit, they make sure you don't owe a whole bunch of money to other people and that you can afford the house. Um, I've seen people in that time frame between the time they, you know, uh, made the offer and the offer was accepted on the house and then it closed. I've seen them decide, oh, well, we have this house out in the country now. Let's go buy a new pickup so we can have put a plow on it, whatever. And then it just blows everything up because now, you know, they were right on the edge of being able to afford the house. And now that you throw in a whatever, $50,000 for a truck, um, it, it makes it so they can't do it. So yes, then the deal falls apart. And that's the one of the contingencies. That's what my video is about on Tuesday that's coming out is contingencies and how people can get out of a deal. So in that case, the buyer would be protected because he has a financing contingency. Um, and, you know, the, the lender tells him, hey, sorry, we're not giving you the loan anymore because you just bought a truck. Um, another <laughs> kind of funny one. It wasn't, this wasn't my deal, but uh, the gal at the title company told me this story. And I think I've told you this one, Hillary, but when you go in to sign all your paperwork, there's a million papers, especially if you're financing that you have to sign. And one of them is a, um, what's the, the word I'm looking for? Um, alias, your alias, you know, any names that you've ever had, and especially for girls, if they've been married or you know, whatever the the situation is, you have to sign a form saying, I have also been known as all these different names. Well, the, this, the story goes that this couple came in, they came into closing. So it's, you know, hours before they're going to own this house. And the uh, gal at the title company pulls out this, this piece of paper that shows the aliases. And this girl had never told her now husband that she had been married before. And it came up on this alias thing that she had a different last name at one point. And so that's how the guy found out about, out about it at the closing table. And apparently he wasn't too thrilled about finding out about it and walked out. And that was the end of that. So a little tip, <laughs> if you're going to buy a house, you should probably let your significant other know about your past because it may come out, out at a weird time. I don't know if that would be the best time to be breaking down your past marriages, but uh, that's what happened with those people. So anyway, I ramble as usual, but yes, Lola, yes is the answer <laughs> 10 minutes later. Yes. Uh, I mean, usually when a uh, a deal gets to a certain point. I know that there are people who find houses that they really love that are under contract and they want to put in a backup offer. And, you know, when it gets a week and a half out from closing, usually in most cases, it's pretty good to go, but you just never know. I always tell the story about my house. I got it on a backup offer. The listing agent told me it's a cash offer that we have now. There are no contingencies. So like I'll take the backup, but it's probably a waste of your time. And it was a situation like this, like a week before they were going to close, something came up. I don't even know what. Um, and so I got the house. So, you know, nothing's guaranteed until it's done. Yep. It's not closed until it's closed. I was right. If you could pick a spot in the Bitterroot, where would you look? Um, you know, the whole valley, it's not that big. 
you'll be i don't know which direction you'll be coming up from sounds like from the south end so you'll come out um sula is still kind of in the mountains but then you'll come into darby and then hit all the towns all the way up to missoula i guess lolo is the northernmost town in what's considered the bitterroot valley um I don't know. You know, it's it's beautiful all the way through there. Um, yes. The south end is where they shoot Yellowstone. So if you watch that show and you see the landscape and the scenery, that's down in the south end of the Bitterroot. But again, from Darby up to Lolo is what, 50 miles, maybe 40 something. So there's really not a bad spot. Um, if you drive on Highway 93 up, up the you know from the south you'll you'll go through the whole valley in like an hour so you'll see you know the different little towns that you go through and there's you know i again i don't know of a bad spot but um you just need to check it out what you're doing is good we tell everybody if you haven't been here um even with all the videos that i've done showing people around you still until you're here you don't really get the get the feel for what's out here it's so uh, true we tell everyone that go drive around and then they're always so happy that they did you just gotta see it all right hi looking for a decent family home with a few acres in mission valley will i be able to find anything under 500k you know, yeah, down there, um, occasionally there will there will be something that comes up in that price range. Um, yeah, the answer is yes. If you want to send us an email, we can send you everything that's currently available. I can't rattle them off right now, but um, again, like Hillary said earlier, we're starting to see more and more listings, and the in the next few weeks, it's usually right end of April, beginning of May is when we get our big, you know, run of listings for the springtime. Um, so it's, it's picking up. Uh, so yeah, there, there may be more stuff or I shouldn't say maybe there will be more stuff coming up in the mission Valley. Um, and if you know, you want, I can send you what's available right now. What do you have next? Uh, we've got a movie star in the house. Alan was in the movie Magnificent Seven when they filmed it in Louisiana. 30 seconds of time is pretty good. Uh, being there six days and the best part is they feed you. So I'm sure you've just made Will extra. Well, excited. they actually, we get, well, according to the, the Facebook site, they pay you 120 bucks a day or something too and gas. So it's not a total waste. I mean, at least you get food money for going down there. You know, for us to go down there, it's about a three-hour drive. So um, if they want us there, if they're going to want you there early, that's going to be a pretty early start or going down the night before and spending the night. So. Oh, yeah. You are right. Is the summer market reflecting higher prices due to the lack of inventory or lower prices due to the higher higher interest rates? That is to be seen, um, Theo. Uh, right now, the, the prices are still high because of the lack of inventory. Um, you know, it'll, it'll be interesting to see if the prices start coming down. Like I said, it, I wouldn't say they're coming down yet. They're starting to kind of plateau a little bit. You don't see. I wouldn't to... say they're coming down. I would just say that we're not seeing already high prices being driven up even higher with 20 offers at this point. But the prices have still, I mean, they're still up there for sure. So, yeah, I guess we'll just have to see how this summer continues to play out right yeah, now it, so high, we're just seeing more of them and like we said earlier it's just going to depend on the interest rates and how much higher they go and how quickly they go up and um all of that's going to play into it so i think it's a little early to be 
speculating on what's going to be this summer. Um, but yeah, hopefully for the, all the buyers out there, we get calls all the time from buyers and hopefully we get a little relief and get more listings and, you know, things for people to buy. Yes. Hello from Washington state. Do you work much with available property with options to build or not around Anderson Lake? How is the year round access in that area? You know, to be honest with you, I have no idea where Anderson Lake is. I don't either. I'm looking it up. Um, so no, we don't. We we work a lot. We work with people buying bare land. So it doesn't matter if you're on Anderson Lake or wherever. Um, but yes, we've sold plenty of uh, lots that people are going to use to build on. So did you find anything? It looks like it is in Lewis and Clark County uh, in Augusta. Helena. In Augusta, yeah. So that's a little far for us. Um, so I don't have any detailed information about that area specifically. Yeah, well, and I, again, yeah, I don't know exactly where Anderson Lake is, but if it's over by Augusta, um, that, you know, you can get in there in the winter, depending on where where this is i don't know but um we could definitely hook you up with someone over there if you're interested in that area what do you guys think of the community and restaurant called abeyance bay mariners haven um that's actually pretty cool and i was out there last summer before we hiked up to the uh fire lookout we, it was really, it was the hottest day of the summer. So we stopped there. Um, but that's a nice, a nice spot. They, they have concerts there, like some pretty big name names come there. Um, they were kind of reliant on the Canadians. And I think they got hurt a little bit in the last couple of years because, uh, the border has been basically closed. Um, but yeah, that's a great little area. Uh, it's not far from Eureka. Um, and it's a nice spot on the water. There's all kinds of docks and, you know, they got a big band shell where these concerts happen. They, it looked like there was a clubhouse. It wasn't open. Um, when we were there, we just kind of sat out on the dock and swam a little bit before we hiked up to that fire tower. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice area. This is a good question. Lola, our cell is are sellers more likely to accept an offer from someone that has seen their house in person versus on FaceTime? And it, I mean, it depends on the seller to an extent, but I would say for the most part, yes, they're much more likely to accept an offer from someone who's seen it. That's actually something that they just added to our buy sell. So when you're submitting an offer, they want you to like physically answer that question with a check mark. Have you been to this house in person? Yes or no. Um, and like, I know the last house, we just got a house under contract. Um, and that seller was not even entertaining offers if the people hadn't been there in person. So, you know, not everybody is that strict about it. I mean, they'll still accept an offer, but yes, you're more likely to have luck, I would say, if you've been there in person. The, 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 the reason for that is people, what ha, what's been happening is whether it's investors or people who have never been here, um, you know, they'll just be throwing offers. They decided I want to move to Montana. And so they just start firing offers at houses sight unseen. And then for a seller, and again, this is something I'm previewing my video coming up. For a seller, when you sign a contract, you can't get out of it. There's no way for you to get out of it unless the buyer misses a date or backs out because of a con contingency or whatever it may be. But as a seller, once you sign that, you're basically taking the house off the market. It doesn't matter if somebody comes in the next day and offers a million dollars more than the offer you just accepted. That's too bad. You can't do anything about that. Um, so the reason they 
put that checkbox on there is because all these people were, you know, just firing offers and people were accepting these offers because they were good offers. But then the, you know, person would fly up here and look around and realize, well, geez, I didn't realize there was a busy road or I didn't realize it was this far out of town or whatever, whatever it was. And then they would back out of the deal. So what that did to the seller is it basically took the house off the market for three weeks or whatever the time frame was. Um, and, you know, and then that, then it didn't go through. So they had to start all over again. So now with that checkbox that Hillary was talking about, they know if you've been there or not. What we do is we do a lot of FaceTime videos. Hillary is we do a lot. renowned for her videos, apparently. I do um, take very good videos. I've been told not to go and do videos anymore because Hillary's just far superior for whatever reason. <laughs> There's many, many reasons. <laughs> so, um, I forget what I was just saying now. You threw me off with <laughs> your criticism. Um, um, oh, so uh, we do take a lot of videos and we, I mean, in our case, we've had a ton of buyers end up under contract who haven't been there. Uh, I think that, you know, we do a little bit of explaining on our end and can say, we've done this FaceTime walkthrough. We've sent them videos to review after the fact as well. They are going to be here by this date. I think that's also where people get nervous. They want to know that their house isn't going to be off the market for three weeks before somebody shows up and decides that they don't want it. So if you can give a hard date, like I can be there by this weekend to check it out. Uh, that's really helpful. But what, yeah. And, and I think what um, we always do too, is if the person isn't there and it is just FaceTime, we tell them that, you know, what we've done and that, you know, we, tell them the interest and that they've been here, whatever it is. But um, now that that checkbox is on there, it makes it a little harder if you're just doing a video. So it looks like here's a question just for you, Hillary. I just saw that. And I was you didn't erase it quick enough. <laughs> I was looking at it. I was like, wait, I don't even know what that means. Um, it you means know, they want to know what size gun do you use when you're I just around. stick with the classic bear spray. There you, all right. But great question. <laughs> yeah, Hillary's a big, big hunts, hunt woman. Hunts woman, how do you There's, say it? Yeah, I do have a, a bow and arrow. I'm sure you have all kinds. Why don't you turn the camera around and show us all the mounts on your wall of the deer yeah. you've gotten? I have a fake one, actually. Oh, man, that brings a laugh, a chuckle. I... Okay, here's another question. What is the wait time for construction or hiring a contractor to build a house? Is it still years away from a build? I don't know the exact answer to this. You would have to call and talk to builders. I would say you're still a year out. Um, and I mean, I just had personal experience with that, trying to build an accessory apartment on our garage. We just can't get anybody to do it. I think it depends on the size of the project, uh, how expensive it is but there's definitely still a wait. I feel I can confidently say that. Well, there's definitely a wait, but I don't know if years is the proper yeah. one. It may be about a year now. Um, again, if we have a list that we put together of all the you know, builders that we recommend in this area, uh, if you want it, let me, we're trying to score votes for you. Let me put the email back up here. Yeah, send us an email and we'll send you the list of builders and then you can kind of go from there and reach out and see what they say. Um, all right. And then this isn't a question, but I want to touch on this because I feel like over the last week we've gotten a lot of questions about rentals, but James says that he would rent a house. Um, and like I said, we've gotten a few phone calls over the last week asking about rentals. And we 
do not have access to rentals any more than you do. There's not, rentals aren't listed on the MLS. There's not a designated site where all the rentals are listed. It's really hard to get a rental and we don't have any like inside information that you guys don't have access to. So we can't be that much help. Um, so should be aware of that, I guess. This is a very good question from Lola again. Um, is there any advice to give a buyer who is going up against a cash offer? What I would say is you're more than likely going to be going up against a cash offer in this market. We're seeing a lot of them. So the, the cleaner you can make your offer, the better. And I'm not saying, you know, don't do an inspection and, and go into that extreme because I would never recommend people buying a house without doing an inspection. That's crazy. Um, I don't care how bad you want the house that, yeah, you always should do an inspection, but if you can just make it clean, the other thing is make sure you have your financing lined up and you can submit your pre-approval letter um, with the offer right away. Um, what else am I missing? Just basically, you know, a clean offer is what it's going to come down to. You know, unfortunately, you have to put yourself in the seller's position. When you get a cash offer, there's no appraisal contingency. There's no financing contingency. So the, the reason cash offers win, you know, at the end of the day, whether, you know, if you close with a finance deal or a cash offer closes at the same price, the seller still gets the same amount of money that they could turn into cash if they wanted. The reason the cash offers are better is because there's no appraisal, there's no financing contingency where yours, as we talked about earlier, could fall apart because you went and bought a truck or you know whatever. Or if, a, if you're offering way over the asking price, um, and it doesn't appraise there again, that can kill the deal too. So that's why as a seller, you can't really blame them. It's a, it's a, it's just a better offer if it's cash, but that doesn't mean they won't take yours, especially if you're up, if it's, you know, a lot of people don't want to sell to some investor or some company or somebody buying it to use as a rental. So, you know, if you, if, if we're representing you, we would tell the, the other agent, hey, Lola is, you know, they want to live here. They want to raise their family here, whatever, to make it, you know, give you a better chance because maybe the cash offer is some company that, you know, is just going to use it for a rental. And, you know, those people may not want to do that. So don't give up if you're going to get up against the cash offer. But, you know, um, that that's, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right. Alan has a good question. Another one. When making a backup offer, do you know what the first offer is? Or do you just make an offer and hope you get it? You do not know what the first offer is. You just hope that the first offer falls apart. Um, yes. Yeah, they're never going to tell you what the first offer is. And so another thing that most people don't know is when you do a backup offer, they'll negotiate that as well, just like it's the first offer or, you know, a lot of people will. So, um, you know, they're going to make it worth their time to have, uh, to have a good backup offer as well. Um, be yeah, to answer your question. They don't, we're not allowed, like if we're represent, like if you're the first offer, Alan, you know, we're not going to, tell the other people, oh, Alan offered this. Um, it's, you know, we're representing you. So that that won't be there. So the, you know, moral of the story is you're never going to know what the other offer was. Correct. Jennifer asks, do you guys know anything about the subdivision Glacier Creek Meadows in Condon? You know, I saw that earlier I was glancing down. I have, I don't. Have you heard of that one? I don't. I'm not familiar with it. That must be a brand new one. 
Um, let's see. Oh, this is another good question. Are escalation clauses a big deal there? Can you take this one or a little what I always harp on about those? Our escalation clause is a big deal. Oh, I you explain this. Will does not like these. Well, it's not that I don't like them. It's just that you know, if if you're wor- if if the agent on the other end on the listing side is a good agent, here's what I explain to people. So let's say, you know, it's again we'll use five hundred thousand dollar house. So let's say you know that it's a multiple offer situation you put on the contract hey i will go up a thousand dollars up to you know five hundred and twenty-five thousand. well if you're the only one that does that or even if you're not the only one that does that and i'm the listing agent you've just played your hand you've just told me you're willing to go to 525 so if the two other offers that you're up against only went to 510 let's say I'm just going to counter you back at 525. And now you, <laughs> you just paid way more than you needed to. Um, so what I tell people instead of doing that is, you know, if you are willing to pay 525, then put that out there to begin with, because more than likely, if there's a, you know, unless it's a brand new agent that doesn't know how this works, they're going to counter back at whatever your highest offer or, you know, whatever you said you'd go up to. Um, so I just tell people, make your best offer. And you have to get in your head that if if whatever offer you make that's your best offer, if you win, you need to be excited about it. I don't I don't ever want somebody to be like, God, I paid way too much, or I am can't believe I paid 525. So. Okay, so this isn't really... We haven't answered the question. Are they a big deal here? I would say I don't run into them often. I've seen one. So are you saying that I was rambling on about something else? <laughs> uh, always. All right. Um, are we to the bottom already? Um, we've got some questions about would you consider the property taxes in Montana high? You know, I've looked that up. Um, we're not actually compared to their, you know, rest of the country. I think we're number 14, if I remember right. So I don't consider them that high. And we don't have a sales tax. So there you go. The only bad thing about Montana you know, when it comes to taxes is they, you know, for people retiring, they tax your social security um, and things like that. I've heard that is, that is an issue for some people. Um, But yeah, as far as I know, the, we're not, we're not horrible um, when it comes to taxes compared to other states. What else? Hello, Nora. Nora's from Europe. This is a question for you since you ski. I do. And yeah, the snowboarding community is big. Um, Yeah, it definitely is. You are allowed to snowboard on Big Mountain. I know that in Utah and in Colorado, there are a lot of resorts that don't even allow it, but you can do it here. There are a ton of people who do it. So yes, I would say for sure. This next one's interesting. Um, Mary Beth, in my area, escalation clauses are used, but if the escalation goes into use, the listing agent has to provide proof of the higher offer. The reason I say that's interesting is because we are not allowed, it's illegal here for us to, you know, show you the other offer Um, because you'd have to block out the name and who it is and, you know, privacy stuff. And, you know, so that means (laughs) it just... Yeah, we don't we don't do that here. So I, I'm where I'm curious where you are that they do that. It makes a lot more sense if, like, in that situation. Yeah, but even that, you know, even with with that rule or you know where they're doing that, if you think about it, you can still counter 
you don't have to, um, you know, you don't have to, well, she just said you have to black out the names. But there again, you could still counter if if your eight, your offer is at 525, what's to stop you from countering at 525? And that has nothing to do with the escalation clause. So again, I think the way we do it would still work there, but I'm not sure where you are and how exactly that rule is written. So it looks like we're at the end. So that- Oh, uh, someone wants to know about my drink. And it was not Peak Sweet Tea. It is the spring edition of kombucha that they sell at the Safeway here. And every time it comes out, I get like 15 at a time. <sighs> oh, and Stephanie is coming out on Wednesday. Yeah, definitely come see us. Yeah, uh, our email is at the bottom there. And... Um, let us know how come I'm not able to scroll up to see the last comments. So anyway, um, send us an email if you want the link and then let me put this up again. Most importantly, we all need to vote for Hillary. So check the link out down below. Um, this would be the greatest thing to ever happen to Hillary in her lifetime. So if there's anything you guys can do for her, <laughs> this is the this is the one ask. So from now until May 1st, you can vote every day. So please vote every day. And if Hillary wins, we'll have a special emergency edition of our live show. And Hillary can give her acceptance speech and show everybody the crown that she gets with this award. So oh man. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope everyone has a good Easter. Thanks for tuning in. And we will be back in two weeks to do this all over again. So hold your questions till then. And uh, vote for Hillary. We'll see you later. Bye.